It's finally happening. This horribly ugly wall, chuck full of electrical and plumbing, is going away today. Don't get us wrong, we're insanely proud of this wall. It was the first wall that we actually stick built in the house and it's got our bathroom and we had to do electrical and plumbing and a lot in this wall. So this wall, probably one of the most complicated walls in our house except for the kitchen wall which will be a notch crazier. But we're excited to see all that stuff go away and for our cabinets to finally end up there and have our, our dream kitchenette complete. If you're just joining us, this isn't really a cabinet building video. We're not going to do anything with cabinets today. It's all about getting the wall prepped to install the cabinets. But in case you're curious about the project, jump back and follow us along as we started with plywood and we built all of our own cabinet boxes, drawers. We actually built our own countertop. We did all of our own hardware install and all that stuff. We're waiting right now for the paint to complete on all the face frames, doors, and drawer fronts. And then um, we're also waiting on the epoxy on our butcher block top. So we got lots of waiting going on, which is a great time to knock this guy out. That way when it's all ready to go, we're ready to install. We actually had quite a bit of prep to do on this wall to get to this point. We did not film any of that stuff, but just to give you a quick rundown, we actually rearranged a little bit of the electrical. Having lived with this wall for quite a while, and then design the cabinets that we're going to be installing here on our own, uh, we kind of thought that we would rearrange things just a little bit to make it more ergonomic and add some features that we didn't already have. So for example, we've added an outlet below the sink and we've wired that into a switch over here so that we can add a disposal in the future if we want to. We don't have to, but it's there. And then we've got a hardwired outlet on the bottom in case we want to add something like a point of use water heater or something along those lines. We don't think that we'll add either of those, but we wanted to give ourselves that option. Good choice with electrical. And then we added a couple of outlets. You'll see these horizontal running outlets up here. Those are going to be for under cabinet lighting. Spoiler! And they're wired into a switch over here so when you flip the switch those cabinet lights will come on. We had to move this over cabinet or over sink light a little bit because it, the way we had originally installed it didn't fit uh, our cabinet design. We hadn't designed our cabinets when we built the wall and did the electrical. So that's all moved and it's wired into a switch over here. And then being super forward thinking we wired up one additional box into the ceiling to give us the option of a track light over this area, the laundry, the kitchenette, and a future table behind me. If you've been following us for a really long time, you know that these little blue PEX lines down here actually are the drip lines or the primers that go to our floor drains in the slab. Way back, way back before we even poured the slab in the garage, we had to lay those lines to pass our plumbing inspection. On new construction, they require a trap primer and that has to be fed from a plumbing fixture. So there's a really complicated device that actually every time you turn on a faucet it actually squirts a little bit of water in a little manifold that gets distributed to the traps, the P-traps, in the floor drains and that's there to keep them from drying out. If they were to dry out because they don't have any water in them and it eventually evaporates, you'll get sewer gas coming backwards into the dwelling and it's no bueno. They require that with new construction, so we laid those. But because we're closing this wall up, we actually need to get that plumbed into something. We haven't been using those. They're actually still completely covered from when we poured the concrete. But because we're closing the wall up, now we've got to wrap that project up. So we got those routed into the bathroom vanity, and that's where we'll be installing that contraption that injects a little bit of water every time you turn the faucet on. For those that have been with us for at least a little while, you know about our cistern monitor and our gravity-fed water system. We have this uh, receiver here that's actually wall-mounted, and it's been fantastic. It's helped us to monitor our water and to get in a good rhythm with our cistern so that we don't run too low, especially during the summer when fire is a consideration and the cisterns are kind of our first line of defense. So what we did was actually move that up. It was down here closer to an outlet because of how it's powered, and we've got it all hardwired into the wall. It's a bit of a commitment but our thinking is it's been great here we don't see why that would change if it does change we'll have to just buy a new receiver and mount it elsewhere for those who followed us on our electrical videos and you're curious about kind of code things I just want to share one little nibbit that I learned um, going through the garage electrical inspection when we wired up the garage lights there's a new code as of 2017 that requires there to be no other outlets on a garage lighting circuit it's a it's kind of a confusing code that they think they're still trying to figure out how to apply. 
My point is that in so doing, we actually found out that we had wired the laundry incorrectly. There is a code that actually requires the laundry lighting to be on its own circuit. I think it actually goes the other way. You're required to have a dedicated receptacle circuit that has no other outlets, and an outlet in this case is a light. So we had wired our light into the laundry circuit. Made sense, it was efficient. But to pass an inspection, we would need to change that. The irony is we actually already passed our inspection, uh, but this came up kind of in a later conversation, and so we did uh, change some of that around, and we've got that light uh, lighting now in the laundry wired into our garage lighting circuit. idea if that's how you're supposed to do that. I've never really spent a lot of time around insulation and I don't know about you guys but have you ever noticed that when you watch tutorials on YouTube they always use an empty wall that has like nothing in it and they're like all right so what you do is and I'm like yeah no and if you read the comments everyone agrees yeah that's not a normal wall that's not a wall that you would actually have in a house so this <laughs> kind of feels like a mess uh, sort of looks like a mess but once it's covered up nobody will know. It's already a lot quieter in there. Using the restroom, no one knows. It's exciting. So I'm kind of hoping that overall that makes the bathroom a little quieter. And some of this, I think for me, is just a test run to see if all this uh, insulating interior walls, which is abnormal um, in more budget homes anyway, uh, is really worth it. Does it make the house that much more comfortable? Uh, I can tell you that sheetrock over sheetrock is really loud. Every time somebody closes a door or, you know, Let's out a fart, everybody knows, okay? All right, so we're using uh, rock wool, which is a basaltic product. It's actually made from minerals, from rocks, and they uh, get it into this fiber form. So this is not fiberglass bats. And there's a couple extra benefits to this. One, it can't mold or mildew because it's rock, and therefore it's very resistive to mildew or any kind of water damage type growth. The other benefit is it's fireproof because it's rock, so it doesn't ignite quickly. So from a fire perspective, it should help with that. And then of course it has R value, which we're not really after on the interior walls because we don't worry, we don't worry about heat loss. But the other benefit is sound. And this company makes a product called Safe and Sound. 
I really don't know what the difference is between this stuff and the safe and sound. To me, it all looks the same, and this is what they actually have available locally, so this is what we purchased. I think we're ready for sheetrock. The only thing is, when we laid out this bathroom from a floor plan perspective, we wanted it to have an eight foot interior dimension. So the outside dimensions are a bit of a nuisance because one sheet of sheetrock won't quite cover the entire wall. We'll make it work. We've got a plan to make it all work. The lower sheet is gonna be a Swiss cheese project. We have so many penetrations in this sheet. It's probably gonna take us longer to get this one sheet cut than to do the entire rest of the project. To help make our lives a little easier for that, um, I tried to make sure that the top of these boxes is four feet on the money. So all we have to do is notch the top of this sheet for that, and then the second sheet will actually come right down on top of it, and that'll save us a lot of kind of punching holes. But then, of course, we've got just a few penetrations in the upper sheet there. Where things get really complicated is all the plumbing. We've got a clean out down there. That's gotta be accessible. We have the drain for the sink and the sink stops. And then of course the, the washing machine and the ice maker. It's a lot going on in this wall. In the past, when Alyssa and I did the sheetrock on the bathroom, we used a keyhole saw, or I mean there's a million names for it. You basically mark your holes, you punch through the sheetrock and away you go. The thing is it really boogers up the paper and it's really aggressive, which is good because it cuts quickly, but it's pretty brutal. And the, uh, the penetrations that you cut in there are just, they're just rough. We're gonna try something different. As part of the estate sale, the tool lot that we purchased a couple of years ago is a cutout tool. And um, this is not a roto zip, it's a proc, uh, what is it, a porter cable. And uh, I'm not really sure if this is really made for this particular task, but we're gonna give it a shot. Hopefully this will A, speed up the process, B, make cleaner cuts, and it should give us the ability to kind of just take a little bit more out. Where trying to do that with the keyhole saw, you just make a horrible mess. All right, so we're starting on the far right. Already almost made a huge mistake. Of course, we have more sheetrock so we can fix it, but we try to keep the sheetrock half an inch off the floor um, so that it's not near moisture. It doesn't, if there is water on the floor, it doesn't wick into the sheetrock. And all the measurements we're pulling are from the floor and I forgot to add the half inch that we're gonna move the sheetrock up. So it almost cut all the penetrations off by one half inch. This is not going well. So I already screwed them up by putting them a half an inch in the wrong direction. And now I put them a half an inch in the wrong direction again. So now we need to lower them, these by one inch, <laughs> otherwise they're gonna be an inch too high. And I've already made all kinds of bullseyes. So whoever can interpret this, like good luck. Well, that really sucked. Um, you pretty much can't see your lines, and the bit really wants to like get excited. It's a big bit for going through sheetrock, and um, yeah, it, and it just boogers. It boogers the edge of the sheetrock just as bad or worse, almost worse than the keyhole saw. So, pretty much all the advantages we were hoping to find from that cutout tool are pretty much non-existent. So we've been using this tool for a lot of random stuff. We actually bought it for a totally different purpose, but we have found its many purposes are, are plentiful. And uh, I'm just curious if this tool will knock this out super quick. I'm sure there's times where you can basically just hang sheetrock and just go around and either use a cutout tool around your door frame or your window or whatever, but sometimes you need to plunge in and I'm kind of curious if this will work really good or really bad. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty great. That's fast, easy. All right, that went pretty good. Let's try it again here. This might be more difficult with this particular bit. So why don't we try this one instead. It's pretty 
great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. That definitely beats the heck out of keyhole saw. If you haven't ever used a keyhole saw on sheetrock, boy oh boy, is it not fun. And I have a hunch we're gonna be recutting this sheet because I can't measure today. And so I'd like to find a more efficient way to cut. That way when we have to do things twice, it goes way faster. Oh, my gut was right. That sucked. <laughs> it fits better than I expected it to. Um, we were able to just touch up a little bit on the wall, which is not, I think that's a good thing. Um, it it kind of looks silly, but I'd rather have that than have huge gaps, you know, around the boxes. Of course, to me, this is learning. Like this wall is gonna get completely covered up between cabinets and backsplash and everything. There will be no sheetrock accessible. Well, that's not true. The dryer and washer are gonna cover this, so you could get back there to access the shower valve and all that stuff. But my point is, like, I'm more practicing trying to be tight with sheetrock so that if we do it in the house, we don't have huge gaps around all of our boxes and everything, which we had that problem in the bathroom. And I believe it's a very common problem for DIY drywallers. We just don't have a system to get this stuff super tight. So we've got to get the sheetrock up here. We're wanting to go around the corner, at least get up and over the door. And then we're hoping to put three sheets on the wall right here. And Alyssa's told me she's hungry, which means dinner has to happen soon. So I better get my butt moving. One more piece and then we're done-ish for the night, sort of. didn't get as far today as I really wanted to. It felt like today just kind of went slow, but in a good way, if that makes any sense. 
Um, it felt really tedious just getting going. I think what I maybe I didn't factor into my plan today was how much time it would take to take everything apart and get it ready to start putting things back together. That definitely took a lot longer than I thought. Maybe because we because we live here and like you have to put things, you know, in place to, to live here. So um, anyway. We didn't get the mudding done. We did not get the taping done. We definitely banged up a bunch of sheetrock and made some damage. I think what I'll do is I'll probably spend another day getting this stuff all taped, mudded, get some of the, the holes fixed, things like that. Uh, we are waiting on the epoxy for the top. We are waiting on the face frames. So it's good to get this stuff done. There's not gonna be any of this stuff in the kitchen or this wall exposed. The, the walls will be covered in plywood. Uh, finished grade plywood and then this thing's going to be either covered in cabinets or backsplash But we still need to get all the screw holes filled and get all the joints taped and all that stuff I think primarily the reason for that is fire um, And I think it does add some strength to things of course the corner over here That's going to need to be taped properly because it's actually going to be visible That's a whole different conversation. You guys will see I kind of have a plan for that I definitely have a new favorite tool for sheetrock I have had people email and message and things saying that these things are great for sheetrock. I think we owned this when we did the bathroom and we were using the keyhole saw, but I'm not sure why it didn't cross my mind to try it out, but either way it didn't. And today we can confirm this thing is rad. It's super precise, so precise that you can just do a quick touch up if you need a box to fit and it doesn't quite fit. So that's really nice. And of course it doesn't booger up the sheetrock nearly as bad as that uh, rotary tool that we have. I don't have the one that everybody recommends. I'm, I'm not really sure if we're gonna buy one or not, but this guy definitely works, but you need a couple of different uh, blades to make it work super good. I'm excited to have that in my skill set and my toolbox now. I remember late in the SIP uh, installation when we bought these screw guns and every single time I use them I'm super flipping happy that we have them because it makes putting screws in super easy once you get the depth adjustment correct and you kind of have the right finesse it's a piece of cake we do have two separate guns because there's actually a different barrel for two different screw lengths and so this one is set up for the sheetrock length and we end up with two guns and two separate barrels. One so we could shoot deck length screws and it comes in super handy for all those things. So if you guys don't have one of these in your toolbox and you find yourself doing work like this, give these things a look, they are sweet. When I was setting up my plan for this project, I guessed that doing wall prep would take me about three days and we're actually right on track. It felt like we should have gotten farther today, but because of all the moving electrical and the other little housekeeping items, that was a full day in and of itself, getting things buttoned up. And then today, obviously we got this far and I think one more day, mud, tape, get some paint and primer on some of this stuff to protect it. That'll be pretty close to ready for cabinets. Alyssa hasn't even seen this yet, and I'm pretty sure when she walks down here in the morning, she's probably gonna have a heart attack and wonder what planet she's on and wonder where all the electrical cords are and where all the studs are. I'm not sure if I can catch her reaction, but if I can, I will, okay? <laughs> I've tried really hard to not look this morning. Right? I've, I've seen little peaks. Oh, man. What do you think? Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Wow, looks so polished, doesn't it? Yeah, do you want, should we paint studs right there and then put some yellow lines no and some orange lines and stuff? So it feels more homey? It's so crazy, I think the biggest transformation like it's that wall. Yeah. It's so finished looking, we finally have our door foamed. Yeah. We actually have privacy in the bathroom. Right? <laughs> oh, you want a privacy in the bathroom, oh, right. okay, yeah. gotcha. And so many little holes to cut around. Yeah. Kind of takes me back to it was a year ago now, we were cutting all the drywall for the bathroom. Yep, we did a lot better job this time. <laughs> Our second stint was much better. You went pretty far on the ICF side. Yep, I wanted to make sure that we had lots of uh, finished wall over there and we can paint it to protect it before we put the plywood up and all that, so. Nice job, love. Thanks. It's cool. gonna look good with cabinets on it, huh? Oh, it's gonna yeah. look like a kitchen and the laundry. It's gonna feel yeah. like a house, even little, if it's just a corner. A little like sanctuary of finishedness. Yep. Just spend as much time over here as you can. Yep.